few years ago, um, so I'm actually based in Singapore, outside of the National Cancer Centre in Singapore, and um, I had this opportunity to do a fellowship in geriatric oncology um, at Duke University, North Carolina, in the United States, under the mentorship or tutelage of uh, Professor Harvey Cohen, who's one of the pioneers in SIOG and, and uh, world-renowned in this area of geriatric oncology. Um, so during that year, I was attached to him in the geriatric department and also to the oncology department. And he came up with a structured program um, uh, which basically constituted a fellowship in geriatric oncology. The key messages would be um, how to, I guess, come up with a program to, that integrates the principles of uh, geriatric um, patients with uh, key principles in oncologic treatment and kind of mesh both together in a manner where we can apply some of the, these key principles in the day-to-day -day practice in dealing with treating older cancer patients. I spent a lot of time on how to assess older cancer patients in the geriatric unit. Um, at the same time, my other fellowship was in urological cancers where I got to see a lot of older patients because I treat prostate cancer. And I got to use principles on geriatric assessment on these older prostate cancer patients. And it helped me tease out who was fit for treatment and how to offer patients treatment in spite of them being older in age, how to dispel um, this concept of ageism, which a lot of us uh, have a bias uh, against. When we see a patient, we look at their age rather than their uh, constitutional state or performance status. So a lot of these principles that I learned from the geriatric clinics I applied. Basically, um, we did not specifically design this for older cancer patients. We enrolled patients in a retrospective manner, uh, or at least we analyzed data in a retrospective manner, looking at Asian or Singaporean patients who use sunitinib as part of their treatment for metastatic renal cell carcinoma in the first line. Initially, when the drug was first approved, we realized that a lot of these patients had a lot of toxicity, and as such, leading to dose discontinuations or dose reductions. At the end, we decided that many of these patients may benefit from a lower dose and they may not require as much discontinuation and may still have some benefit. So we gave them a lower dose of 37.5 milligrams rather than the standard 50 milligrams. And we found that when we followed them up and we looked at our whole cohort of about 100 patients, that there was no or little difference between both the groups, dose on 37.5 versus 50. In this particular study, we looked at a subset of patients who were older than 65 years, so the older cancer patients, and we found that it was similar as well. They, those, who had, those who were given a lower dose, the 37.5, derived a similar benefit um, when compared to the younger cancer patients. Um, but we did find that in spite of them being given a lower dose and similar efficacy, um, some of them did have more discontinuations. That was uh, irrespective of age group, but when we compared the above 65s and uh, those younger than 65, again, there was no difference in efficacy in spite of higher discontinuations in those above 65. I think one of the key, message would, key messages would be uh, that uh, older patients are definitely unique uh, as a group and we may need to consider a lower dose and, uh, or, and not deny them treatment because they seem to derive the same benefit. Um, and also another message would be um, even if we have to dose reduce in this group, it's better for them to be on the drug at a lower dose uh, than be off it. Of course, there will be a group of patients that may require dose discontinuation due to toxicities. Um, however, we don't have predictors as to who these group, th that particular group is going to be. So you may have to start on the drug first and see how you tolerate. But if you do tolerate well, you're going to do well. If you have a patient older than 65 years old, I think first of all, you've got to assess the patient in terms of their physical functional status. Um, number two, start at the lower dose, 37.5 milligram daily for four weeks on, two weeks off, rather than the 50 milligrams, and then assess their toxicities. If they do tolerate it well, I think um, you can continue on on the same dose and patients are going to benefit from it um, and with a reasonably tolerable side effect profile.